Hello, I'm Chris Lisher, and welcome to Turning of the Wheel, an intelligent, lively discussion on astrology, art, and adventure. Timing is everything, and as the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed. Join me as I explore the current planetary alignments and offer insights for coping with change. Educational, informative, and enlightening, the turning of the wheel is a welcome pause in your daily swirl of constant change. Through intelligent discourse, inspired guests, and educational segments, I will help to enlighten your knowledge of astrology and guide you to accept change as the great wheel of life turns. Call in with your questions and speak with some of the greatest visionaries in the time-tested practice of astrology. Turning of the Wheel. Astrology, art, and adventure with Chris Flisher each week on Turning of the Wheel podcast. Hello and welcome to Turning of the Wheel. My name is Chris Flisher. As you know, this is a show about astrology. I thank all of you who have followed me diligently over the years, and I appreciate your support and enthusiasm about astrology. I think it's a fascinating art and science, and it's one of the great indicators of where we are headed in this world. Before we get my guest on, I want to remind you about my newsletter, which goes out every Sunday afternoon. In there, you'll find a couple of paragraphs of mundane astrology, and then I break it out in individual sun signs. I encourage you to read your sun sign as well as your rising sign uh, to get a better picture of what's going to be happening in your life that week. These are theme-based ideas, don't forget. I'm not going to tell you to buy a lottery ticket on Tuesday, but they are theme-based, and so you've got to learn to stretch your mind a little bit to make it work, and it does work very well. Anyway, uh, last week I was down in Boston at the NCGR meeting. I was going to see Gary Christian, and I, happened to, and I ran to Joyce Levine, who was the chapter president, and I asked her if we'd like, we started talking about the March for Our Lives generation, which has come up over the last several, several months uh, with regard to the Parkland shooting and stuff like that, so I thought it'd be a good topic to get her on to talk about it. Joyce is a highly regarded astrologer in the community. She's been doing it for most of her life, if not all, and she's also the author of Breakthrough Astrology, which is uh, Transform Yourself in Your World. It's on uh, Wiser Books, and it's an excellent read for anybody who's interested in astrology, beginner or seasoned astrologer. It's well worth a, a real interesting take on, and nicely put together, easy, accessible language, and really nicely done. Her website is JoyceLevine.com, and it's great to have you on. Joyce, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Chris. It's nice to be here with you. Yeah, so we were talking about March for Our Lives, and of course, you and I both being of the generation that we are got confused with March for Life, which is a different organization altogether, but we're talking about the March for Our Lives because we really have seen a departure in the narrative surrounding guns over the last several months, starting with the Parkland shooting. And it's interesting, this is coming to fruition now. When many times, probably you and I both have thought that this would have come to light far sooner than now, and yet here it is in our midst. And I'm wondering, you know, we talked a little bit about the generational aspects and the, and the, and the signatures that these kids have who are coming up and, and the kind of imprint they're going to make. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Well, one of the things is a lot of times that we as astrologers look at what's going on and we look at where are the planets now at this moment. Mm -hmm. But there's something else to consider, which is, what are what are where the outer planets because the outer the outer planets form the zeitgeist right. or and the outer planets of the of the youth particularly have a lot to do with the social issues that come forth and i think that a lot of times that's overlooked because if we look at right now the outer planets are like not particularly liberal no okay we have you know we have saturn and capricorn Pluto and Capricorn, um, Pluto around its own heliocentric south node, mm -hmm. um, all of which are heavy and, you know, look at, at things as more, uh, Pluto always brings out the dark side of a sign and Capricorn is business, finance, government, authority. And so the dark side of that has come out. And we've been, you know, again, depending on people's political views, we've been living, you know, in the shadow of that for quite some time. Yeah, for sure. What's different is that the young people today, or the people this like the Parkland students and other people their age, were born with the outer planets of Uranus and Neptune in... Um, Aquarius, which is the sign of humanity, brotherhood of man, ideal, it, mm -hmm. and it idealized community. Social conscience, yeah, doing things for the good of the greater community. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and their Pluto is in Sagittarius, right. 
which has to do with government, legislatures, laws. And so what I really see with happening now is that these young people, because I don't think this is ending. No, I don't either. This is, this is a ball that can't stop going down the yeah. hill. <laughs> and this is, I mean, if you think about all of the shootings that happened in the past, that, I mean, th- these, I was going to say kids, I don't, you know, I mean, these young adults, many of them, for as long as they have been in school, they've been like having to hide under the desk. They, like for those of us that are of a certain age, you know, we we we, were, we got these uh, things of hiding under the desks because the Russians might attack. Right, I remember them very well hiding under the desk because for the you know for the air raids we used to have air raid drills and stuff like that. And 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 these young people, I was actually shocked to find out have been having for years now drills of of where they would hide if there was a shooter. Right. I mean, I can't even imagine being brought up with being afraid of your classmates in that way. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's stunning. It's a remarkable thing. And it's not just that they have drills, but they also have, in some cases, I've seen protective rooms where they go to. This is part of their daily vernacular. This is part of their daily routine. They walk in. Some schools have metal detectors and people have, they have clear backpacks now as, as well. <clears throat> it's remarkable. And, and but but I think that people of their age becoming young adults now are the age of are have the outer planet signature of people who will do something about it yeah they have the rebellious streak there with the uranus there and that and that idealized idea of, of you know trying to fulfill a neptunian promise of getting, making the world better i think i think that's true and i think i think that the other thing is um there's a book that i refer to a lot which is called the fourth turning um mm. which talks about historical um, generations of 80, 80 to 100 year cycles. It's not written by an astrologer. No, I've, I've heard this book before. I've had, someone's mentioned it on my show before. It, it's approximately 20 to 25 year cycles with 80 to 100 years total. And there are four stages. So it's like the World War II generation was the hero generation. You know, they, they saved the world. Yep. And then after... But they they were saving the world at a time of a crisis. Mm-hmm. So the next, so after the crisis comes the high, where basically everything is good. Mm-hmm. And then there's kind of a period where things, you know, just kind of coast <clears throat> for another twenty years, and then there is the period of like our what would be our period the baby boomer period right with the generation of awakeners and seek you know seekers but th- that generation can only occur when times are basically good right so our parents we grew up our parents grew up better off than their parents yeah which is not true for most of us no or a lot of us well then in theory it was supposed to keep building up that way you were supposed to always do better than your parents but it isn't the case <laughs> but historically that's never been true yeah. it just we think and if you and then after the you know then comes sort of another after the awakening period becomes like another you know more moderating period mm-hmm. and then comes another crisis which is where we are now yeah and the crisis period is associated with war depression um Sort of the overturning of cultural mores and uh, as, you know some real societal changes. I'm I'm so happy to see these kids inspired. And that, but they this can only happen. I mean, I've been looking for the heroes because I was for the hero generation for the last ten years. It's like where are they? Because I thought they, um, the author of the book actually thought they would have been here. It would have been the millennials, but it's not. It's it's the younger generation beyond them. Mm-hmm. And I I really do think that these are the people. As, particularly as they get older, that are going to change things. But it's unlikely that they're going to change things in a period that's calm. Oh, no, this won't be a calm period. It, there's no way a change can happen in a period that's calm like this. This is a time when, and what's great about it is that they're all going to be hitting the 18 age frame, uh, age period when they get to be election for the elections, which is coming up in 2018 and 2020. So their voice is going to carry loud and far. The only thing that's in contrast with that, unfortunately, is we've got all these other planets in conservative signs. 
They are, it's, but this might be indication. I'm thinking that if we look at this, we're looking at the upcoming, say, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto conjunction in Capricorn. It is a conservative time, but it does also, I think, warrant an enormous sea change of sorts. We, are, we have to be responsible. I think Saturn speaks to the responsibility. I think these kids are driving the conversation that says, this is how we act like adults. This is how we be our responsible. We put away the guns. Well, I, th I think that's true, but I think that there's also... We, we it's it's sort of like there are like we have Neptune and Pisces right now, mm -hmm. which is idealism, spirituality, compassion, and that is an extreme contrary influence to the Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn, which are Saturn maybe be responsible and you know pay your dues, but Capricorn is also a conservative sign, which can also be you know cut Medicare. Cut social security. Right. Um, don't give people anything they don't work for. Mm -hmm. And so we have the these um, contra indications going on simultaneously. Right. And I'm just not sure that that's over yet. Well, you know, one thing I think is that when, when there's great potential, like when we have the potential of Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, all in Capricorn, like coming up in 2020, and we're feeling, you know, we feel the influence of it looming. I think that there's potential. There's a potential, even though it's a pragmatic, like you say, conservative time, the potential is there for enormous change of some sort, a sea change, I think. Well, I, but I think things, I think that it, that will bring in things getting worse before they get better. Mm-hmm. Right. I would be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I hope I'm. I hope we're. I hope we're, we're wrong. But I think that's what it's going to come down Saturn, to. Well, the Pluto conjunction coming up before Jupiter ne doesn't quite get to the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto at the same time. Right. The conjunction of Jupiter it is with Saturn and Aquarius afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I I think the the real time of what I would call, you know, when the heads come off <laughs> is when Pluto goes into Aquarius, which is not till I think 2024 or beyond. Yeah. Well, so we're, we're going to get some significant okay. changes there, but you know, we do see the lineup there as uh, conservative. Yeah. And I think you're right. If things probably will get worse, so you could always argue, well, how can they get worse? But don't ever say that because it always inevitably does happen. Um, we are in a time, though, when this momentum is gathering, and, and I think these voices being young are, are, are enough to propel this conversation further. Oh, I agree completely. I just don't think it's going to be this, all of a sudden, it's different. Oh, no. I, 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 that's, that's, I, I, yeah. These, these movements take time, and I do think that when it's, it's sort of like when the people that were born in the mid-60s that had the Uranus-Pluto conjunction... Mm -hmm. When they got to be like young adults, is is was the dot com booms right? You know, if they didn't take a pump, uh, I live near MIT. If people didn't take a pump, a company public by the time they were mid thirties, they thought they were failures. Right. <laughs> In the same way, but with with different motivations, I think as these as these young adults become older, you know, like more. As they age, mm -hmm. then the then the social priorities are going to change. I just think that it's going to change over time, rather than I, I don't I don't think it's all coming with this. I, I don't think the Jupiter Saturn Pluto is going to do it. I think it's going to take much longer than that. Well, it may take uh, you know ten years. I think for them to hit that sort of that when they when this generation hits their own Saturn returns and they start to have babies and have houses and stuff, they're going to their concerns are going to shift. They're going to be much more, um, you know, more. Uh, concerned about their offspring which falls in the same pocket of time that you're talking about which would be appropriate then yeah no i again i i think that they're headed in that direction it just it takes it social change always takes time regardless of how much of a necessity it is and i think that we have to we look at the placements of the outer planets and these young adults for what's coming but we still have to deal with where the outer planets are now. <laughs> right. And we, have to, we can't avoid that. We have to sort of deal with We can see the trends there, and we know that it may happen. But it's a very long, slow process, as you say. You know, uh, nothing worth having ever comes too easily. And uh, we're in the time where a lot of these structures we see are being torn down. And at least we see the, the beginnings of them being torn down. And uh, regardless. Well, I, the whole thing with the NRA is incredible. Mm -hmm. It sure is.
like that teenager David Hogg from Parkland, right, got um, a Fox News commentator's advertisers to pull out. I love that. It was Laura Ingram, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 I mean, that is, you know, that's incredible. But I, you know, it was interesting because I looked at the chart of the NRA, and they're having their their fifth Saturn return. In fact. Saturn, if you look at Saturn as the planet of where you pay your dues or right. discipline and responsibility, mm-hmm. they were having their fifth Saturn return exactly on the day of the Parkland shooting. Yeah, that's great. That's just classic. You and, know, and, and the thing about it, I think it, it, it takes, a reason it's taken so long, I think that it, it took somebody who, was, uh, who had feet on the ground in that school who was old enough to, to talk, not like Sandy Hook, which was horrendous by all stretch of the imagination, but wasn't enough to get that moving because people were too, they were just too stuck. But this time people were in the trenches. This is a generation that's in the trenches and they found their voice and they're speaking it. I, I agree completely, but I think it's, they can do that because of the timing. Mm-hmm. Because I think t- 10 years ago they would have been dismissed. Yeah, they would have. Of course they would have. Yeah. Or they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have taken the challenge. They wouldn't have stepped up. You know, they wouldn't, I mean, cause they've had other, we've had other, uh, you know, situations that are just as, 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 you know, you know, we've had other Columbine, you know, the list goes on and on Virginia tech, all these places have had these tragedies. I think it's the combination, as you mentioned, this culmination of the outer planets and the generational signature that these kids have that is propelling them to say, we're not standing for this anymore. We are old enough. You, you adults are not doing a very good job. <laughs> Absolutely. And, but the interesting thing, when I looked at the NRA's chart, their chart, is highly afflicted. Okay. Yeah. Which is, and so, in a sense, nothing is a coincidence. And so, when you have those kind of events all happening simultaneously, you get the you know the kind of difficult chart. You get the school shootings. You get the eclipse that was right before the shootings. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Which the eclipse energy before the shooting, which because it was only the day the shooting was only the day before. Mm-hmm. Um, it's in a sense it I don't want to say uplifts is the wrong word but it sort of strengthens the impact of the results of the shootings yeah it amplifies it I think in yeah, some way. yeah exactly yeah right and, uh, and it's remarkable that, they, that they've gathered the strength here because you know you do we it's always struck me as curious why we wouldn't be and now, we, now, now that we talk about it of course it makes more sense but why weren't people more outraged at other other we've always got these thoughts and prayers things that you see all the time and that's about as far as it ever got but what's what you know why this particular incident versus say the pulse nightclub or the las vegas shooting or any other but we've got countless of them this one in particular has left well it. but again i think it goes back to the generation of people that it affected right because remember uranus and neptune aquarius also, also uranus and neptune and aquarius are also social media right that's when that's when the internet took off that whole era right back in 2000 and the and these young adults know how to use the social media because it's social media that changed things yeah it sure did well now they have the platform they have a vehicle to get the, the word out there and the and it spread i mean a young i mean that the the march tomorrow um or the school walkout tomorrow right was scheduled by a, like a a teenager in Connecticut. I mean, it's actually amazing. And then the word just spreads because of social media. That's what makes it work. Yeah. Um, Sixteen-year-old student in Connecticut, and I'm I'm just looking at. Um, now they're supposedly. Um, 2,500 schools are going to participate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It just, I mean, it's, it's amazing that 2,500 schools are participating in something that was sort of organized on the fly, you might say. Well, very quickly, yeah, but it gathered so much strength and it just it, it rolled on like a, like a tornado. It just was unstoppable. But see, again, I think that goes back to the outer planet's that the the collective that these young adults are tied into 
Yes, I totally get that. Yeah, it makes perfect sense that, that they and they're having the tools. The tools are necessary are, are available for them now to get the word spread, whereby they couldn't have done that before. They couldn't have done that any other time, really, if you think about it. I mean, it's through the advancement of social media that that's allowed them to give this. That has given this this platform, this vehicle for change. But see, I think it all goes together. Oh, it does. Yeah, the I mean, that they were that they were born at that time. It would be only natural that that would be available to them. Right. And they have the uh, they and they have the wherewithal, and they're not they're not, and they also have a certain sort of a rebellion to them that they're saying we're not going to just because the parents said it's okay, we're not standing for that anymore. That's the sort of the Iranian kind of quality that gives them that sense of you know urgency and you know kind of doing against the grain, which is great. We need that. Well, the the interesting thing is they're really they're going against. I'd say that that is pitting them against what you might call Saturn, Pluto, and Capricorn interests. Oh, of course, yeah. Which is the power structure. But I think that the reality is that most Americans are fa favor gun control. So they're, they're really not against the grain of public opinion. They're against the grain of power and authority. Of the NRA, yeah, and, and those that stand by them. Exactly. And with so many politicians whose pockets are lined and supported by the NRA, this is going to be a, a time of awakening for them. I think many of them already see their handwriting on the wall. I mean, they're, people are leaving Congress in droves. <laughs> Every day a new retirement comes up, it seems. Well, I mean, don't forget they get paid for life once they've been there. Oh, I know. They get paid for life. They get health insurance for life. They even get, I think they even get uh, you know, financial aid for their, for their students going to college. They get everything you could possibly imagine. And... Uh, and, you know, I mean, why wouldn't you? If you're getting $150,000 a year for the rest of your life, why wouldn't you retire? Who needs the headache? And, of course, they're, you know, it's just a remarkable uh, injustice in the, in the system. But that's another whole story altogether. Um, well, but they, also, they know that, that they've also be just bankrupt the system. Yeah. Yeah. It, we're in for such a rude awakening in a couple of years. I mean, this trickle down, this, this tax cut is, is just an enormous burden that's going to just wreck the economy. I can't help but see how it would do anything other. Well, I don't think the, 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 econ the reality is the economy was never fixed. That's a, that's a complete illusion. Yeah. I mean, the numbers, the you can't go with the stock market. The stock market is a false barometer. The stock market in, in the economy are not the same thing. The, the stock market got fixed. But the real economy in terms of people's income, you know, if, if for the average wage earner, that's why Trump got elected. Yeah. But there's not going to be anything in. But the thing is that we, we've we've been we've been bait and switched. We are getting get exactly the opposite of what we thought we were getting, and it's only and the the tax breaks that we get as average American citizens are only last for a year, whereas the corporations get them for the remainder of their lives. I suppose they can overturn this if they come if it, if there's another you know administration change, and we would hope that would change it. I'm sure they'll be they'll have to change it because there's not going to be enough money. There won't be enough money, and they're tripling the debt, and they're asking for huge expenditures. They're just—they're going wild. They've—they've they've totally turned their back on all conservative ideas of what they used to be. They used to be deficit hawks, and now they're just the exact opposite. Well, they were really—they—they they spoke like deficit hawks. They never—they never acted like them. Right. But remember that we're coming up to the Pluto return of the United States chart, mm -hmm. and. A return when some when there's an event, there are always events that lead up to the event. Right. And so, in a sense, we're in what you might look at is um, pre-revolution times. You know, right. The, so back in the days when representation without no representation without uh, no uh, taxation without representation. Exactly. <laughs> right. Those days. Right. Of a rebellious time when the United States was born. We were born it, out of rebellion. Exactly. And I think that, you know, we're going to see that coming again. And in the time frame before, you know, we've got another couple of years before the Pluto return. And we're we're sort of, in a sense, facing the same issues as that were going on then. Yeah, we are. A government control that is not working for the people, it's not for the people, by the people at all. It's, it's totally grown wrong. So, yeah, the themes are there. It's amazing to see them recur in such accuracy, with such um, precision, um, in, in, it's, as far as the themes concerned and, and sort of the overarching uh, consensus of the public. You know, the, you know, and the thing is we're getting such skewed 
uh, news feeds, uh, regardless of, regardless of who your who your your go to news person is, we're getting skewed versions of that. We're getting a very small taste of what is really news. There's so much more news that we're not getting, um, which would be viable and valuable for us to understand because of what it would it would portend. It would show that this is this is slowly happening. Well, I think you have to. I mean, if you if you listen to MSNBC or CNN, you get the left, right? And if you listen to Fox, you get the right. And there's no. There's very little actual news from being reported. It's all opinion. Yeah, and there's very little in between there too. I mean, there's there's some uh, you know there's some you know third party uh, uh, organizations out there, but it's very hard to get objectivity. And because the the news headlines are so full of sensationalist stuff that's happening that day, there isn't really much time to go into, into depth on what the long term ramifications are. You know, if we didn't have so much chatter out of this White House, we might see. You know, the office, uh, the Congressional uh, Budgetary Office going into greater detail saying this is not going to work. Maybe that would be a front page story. People might be up in arms. They said, wow, this isn't going to work. Why are we letting it go through? But there's so much news that gets in the way, so much distraction. Well, I think that in some degree that's purposeful. Oh, I do, too. I, I, I think it's that's but I think that. But I think that if you read things like The Intercept or, I mean, there's, if you look at Vice News. Yeah, I, mean, I love Vice News, yeah. There's actually good news out there. The problem is you've got to search for it. Yeah, it's very difficult. Vice News is doing an excellent job. I'm really impressed with them. I think they just really nail it, especially from a global standpoint. It's not just about the United States. No, I mean, the thing is the world is global. Right. But if you look at Vice News, if you look at, um, what is it, the, the independent reporters, Yeah. That, that whole group of international reporters that rep- reported on the Paradise Papers, which I don't... It's it's interesting because Me Too gained a lot of headlines, but yeah. the Paradise Papers just seem to disappear. Yeah, yeah, they just did. They did, but the Me Too I think got 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 legs because of the fact that the way it came out, people started to get their courage up. They were not afraid to speak up, and then we had a couple of sensationalized scandals that sort of busted it open. They oh, may no. not they may not be part of the same situation, but they do bring the topic to the table. No, I mean, I understand that. It's just that you would think that when a worldwide network of of journalists got together and investigated reporting and found that all of these companies and individuals were hiding money. And so here they are talking about deficits and there's no money. There's plenty of money. They're just not collecting it. Yeah, it's all down in, in some country on an island in the Caribbean someplace or and, offshore somewhere. Exactly. And I don't know if you saw any of the reporting, but the, the Trump's entire cabinet was pretty much on there. Yeah, I'm not at all surprised. So the idea of draining the swamp was not that. And it's interesting. There's an interesting parallel here, too, as well. If we go back um, to I think 84 years, we would go back to when Herbert Hoover was in office and he was talking about the same things. He was a big isolationist um, um, president, and there's a lot of similarities there as well, which is an 84 years ago would have been a Uranus year, year cycle. Well, but but here's the thing. The Democrats have been no better than the Republicans in terms of the economy. Mm-hmm. It's, they've, they're, they're all corporate globalists, and what's gotten left behind is American workers. These deal, all of the deals that have been made, whether it was by a Republican or by Clinton or Obama have favored corporations over people. They, they just all have. Yeah. And that is what I think what Trump is bringing back as much as I dislike him and dislike his, you know, everything. <laughs> what he's bringing back to the forefront, not that I think he's handling it or, doing anything to help it is the fact that the American worker has basically gotten the short shift in all of these deals. Right. And until we speak up and start fighting back with our polls, our ballots rather, we're not going to see anything change. This is the problem. We, it's going to take somebody, somebody has to wake up sooner or later. Maybe these tariffs will wake people up. Who knows? We'll have to see that. Um, we're talking today with Joyce Levine. She's an astrologer out of, out of Boston. Her book is Breakthrough Astrology. Um, Excellent book, Transform Yourself and Your World. Really easy uh, read for people who are interested in astrology. And we'll be back in a few seconds here. We're talking about the March for Our Lives and the generation that 
that brought this to light, which is the ones that all those kids were born in the year 2000, 1999, with that very strong Uranus and, um, and Neptune um, in, in, in Aquarius uh, signature. So we'll be back in a few minutes and uh, hang in there. Meanwhile, her website is JoyceLevine.com. Check her out, and uh, we'll be back. So hang in there. What is your destiny? Where are you going? What is your real purpose? Do you know? Do you want to know? Of course you do. It's your duty to yourself. We are all here for a reason, and we all have great potential. Discover all of this and more with a professional astrology reading. My name is Chris Fisher, and I can help you. Discover your strengths and work on your weaknesses, and live your life to its fullest capacity. Based on your birthday, birthplace, and birth time, an authentic astrology reading will allow you to live your life to the fullest and reveal your true purpose. Only real astrology can give you real information. It is your destiny, and it is your path. Write me at chris at chrisflisher.com and book a reading today. Or call me at 978-393-1036. That's 978-393-1036. www.chrisflisher.com. Astrology is the science of spirit, and it can serve as an invaluable aid in making the difficult choices in life and seeking truth in all the directions we choose. It holds the potential to allow each of us to evolve to our highest potential. It is the logic of the universe, the code of existence, and the pathway to true wisdom. It is our duty to draw from it the instructions for our lives and to live them to our fullest potential. As the great wheel turns, We are best prepared when we are best informed. Hi, your host, Chris Fisher here. I've been producer and host of this podcast and radio show for the past 10 years. My goal has always been to provide enlightening, progressive, and logical discussions about where we are as a species and how we move ourselves further down the road towards our greater potential. I believe astrology provides a great tool for observing our progress and awakening our consciousness to becoming a whole, better, and more complete individuals. I have sought to invite the best contemporary guests, thought leaders, and progressive minds to discuss topics that concern us all, regardless of your beliefs. Consider making a contribution through PayPal to help keep the great wheel turning so that I can continue for the next 10 years along the same enlightened path. As always, I thank you for your support. Okay, welcome back to Turning of the Wheel. Uh, my guest today is Joyce Levine. She's an astrologer out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. Her book is Breakthrough Astrology. And we're talking today about the... Um, March for Our Lives Generation, for lack of a better term, which are the students out of Parkland uh, who have sort of started this firestorm of dissent against the NRA and the idea of you know school shootings. It's sort of this, this is the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. And it is remarkable because this is a generation that was born with Neptune and Uranus in Aquarius, both of which are you know, indicators of the kind of tone and temperament this generation has. You know, with Uranus there, this is all about, you know, being, uh, uh, Aquarius is a socially active uh, sign. With Uranus there, we get sort of rebellion on a socially active stage, which is exactly what these kids are doing. And these kids are also going to be a voting age at the time, which could not be more critical. And this is why the ideas of this, of this idea of this momentum building is so valuable and, and really impressive. And it's got this strong astrological signature, which is really spot, just spot on. So we're talking about that today, Joyce. And, you know, when we think of these kids coming up and the power they have and the, and the, 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 the walk that they're staging on, on um, April 20th is, was, was just born out of, you know, social media and just things going viral, right? Yes. One, one Connecticut student put this out and now... The, I, the last thing I read, there are twenty five hundred schools. Yeah, and and her for her, the the last school walkout or was for seventeen minutes to honor the Parkland students. Right, this one is going to be for a day. Mm-hmm. They're going to walk out for the rest of the day, and it's not just about the Parkland students; it's about everything that's happened in terms of violence. And her ideal in this is. She wants to be inclusive, so it's not just, you know, sort of like white suburban students, but that that this walkout really encompasses shining light on everybody who's who's involved with school violence, because some of the criticism has been 
that nothing has really been said. There's there's violence in in urban areas every day. Right. That has that a lot of urban people feel very overlooked by mm-hmm. by what's going on. And so the the other thing I think about this generation is the looking at it like we're all in this together. Right. Not like it's white versus <clears throat> Black it's, it's not. It's not me centric. It's us centric. Exactly. It's, mm-hmm. com- it's again. It's another Aquarius word, community. Right. And that it's community centered, and the community is a big umbrella rather than separation. Right. And you. And you. Of course, you only thing. Anytime any real social thing has happened, it happens from a, a group. It has to be a, a, you know united. If it's if it's not a group, nothing changes. Right. And so, as again, as these people get older, but I think that the seeds of social change started in the 60s with the Uranus-Pluto conjunction. And then they, it, it's like once it's, from a seed, things grow. Right. So the seed may not be the causal event of every single thing that happens, but it's, it's like the precipitating event. In the same way, the Uranus-Pluto square, which was, you know, in 2008, 2009, 2010, through 2012, the seeds of change for now started. Again, I, I'm not saying that they caused each thing that's happened, but the initial, um, in a sense, rebellion was started in the Mideast. Right, the Arab Spring. Exactly, with the Arab Spring against repressive governments. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's like anything. It's like a, a you know a balloon filling with gas. It, it reaches a point where it bursts, or you know whatever analogy you want to use. It there comes a point in time when action must be taken, and this is what we saw. We saw this action being taken, and um, <clears throat> it's about. Um, it's about getting things done, and the you know the astrology is spot on for this time frame. We can see it there, and we know that the rebellion's there. I'm really encouraged by this. I think you're right, though, that there is a, there's going to be a challenge here. It's not going to be a, a, a slam dunk for these kids to do this. But the fact that they're being so powerful and being heard has got to make some politicians think twice. Because and, and we can see them exiting the Congress left and right, either the House of Representatives or the or the Senate. Uh, people are turning in. They know that they're up against a, a very tough. A crowd here, a very tough election cycle coming up. And, but uh, I think that we can't forget the opposite side of this, which, which is, again, the negative side of the Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn, where we have right-wing um, people in, all over the world taking power, whether it's here with, with the Trump election, whether if you look overseas. Oh, um, yeah, we see in Turkey and Hungary recently, Hungary just recently elected... Uh, Everywhere, I mean, the you know there there's an anti-globalism which has turned into um, extreme prejudice. And I went to a talk last, actually last week, by a guy named Robert Kuttner. Um, it was actually quite good, and he's he's just written a book called "Can Democracy Survive Global Capitalism." And I think that, that that is so perfect for the cycles that we have now. Yeah, totally. Because with the Saturn, Pluto, and Capricorn, and it's like the the far right has gained power, and the far right is because is fascism, which you see you're seeing turn into in a lot of countries. Yeah, it's really and I incredible. Don't think we're, we're not immune here. What I see is these these young people with the Uranus Neptune as the antidote for that. But it's but there there are definitely polarizing forces going on. And I don't think that it's gonna be a smooth ride before things change back again and hopefully that they're the side that wins. And not just here but worldwide. Right. Well, there's the division is worldwide. You're right about that. There's this huge uh, sort of like a very polarizing. But of course, you know, polarity is OK. In some ways, you need polarity to have balance in life. We understand that as a as a as a philosophical question or, or comment. 
But in this case, I think we see them uh, rising up in ways that they are going to be an, a, a very viable and perhaps the only viable, perhaps the only voice against this sort of rise of, con of uh, conservatism. Well, see, in this country, they have the freedom to do that, at least at this point. Mm -hmm. In other countries, there isn't that freedom. I mean, if you look at particularly, I just happen to have friends in Turkey. Um, so that I'm, I may be more aware of what's going on than other people, but, or pay more attention to it. But, you know, college professors, journalists, anybody that doesn't agree with the government is getting, in, you know, imprisoned. Right. And by a person who was elected by the, by, in a, in a democratic election. Yeah, that's just that's just incredible. I mean, just that alone, just a simple statement. You know, some we have, these people elected them, and yet they're being put in jail by the person they elected. And it's the same thing is going to happen in this country when some of the farmers and the people who are manufacturers who voted for Trump are going to find themselves sadly uh, misguided or, or misled. Well, I'm, I'm not sure the people that voted for him are in jail, but the rest of them. But <laughs> I'm not sure that those are the people that are in jail. But but I but I think that the point is that. Just because somebody's democratically elected doesn't mean they're fostering democracy. Oh, of course not. No, no, that, that's, those are two different things altogether. And I, you know, and I, I so I, I think that we're, the world is at another crisis point. You know, when Pluto was in cancer, which was World War I and the beginning of World War II, mm -hmm. Pluto is now on its opposite side of Capricorn, and we have the same kind, the same kinds of issues coming up again. Right, the threat of uh, the threat of fascism, the threat, the threat of dictatorship is very loud and very clear, and uh, it's it's really startling to watch. I mean, we whoever would have thought we were making progress, but it does prove to you, it does it does illustrate to us how cyclical the whole the whole nature of this of the world is. It's got this sense of. You know, we've been here before. It's a different time and place, of course, but we've been here before. Well, I think as human beings, we think linearly. Yeah. So we think, okay, this is what things are like today. So that's what, so tomorrow, this is what they'll be like. But something always happens that throws a curveball into that, mm -hmm. for better or worse. And, you know, I, I think that nobody would have expected that we would be on the verge of fascism again. Unheard of. We thought we would have learned our lesson, but I think this is the nature of it. I think this is a, it's a pendulum that swings from left to right and back and forth and good to bad, however you want to use it. But it's there, it's recurring, and it happens over and over again. And then we can see it through history all the way back, which is part of the reason why astrology works. <laughs> but see, again, I think that whatever sign Pluto is in, the dark side of that sign is what surfaces. Mm -hmm. And Pluto went into Capricorn in 2008 at the beginning of the financial, like right, right, right then, yeah. At, Right along with the financial crisis. That's right. And since then, you know, you know, I I always give this talk about the difference between Neptune and Pluto, and the sign that Neptune is in always gets idealized. You know, if you think back to when Neptune was in Capricorn, everybody wanted to be a CEO, and if you didn't work a hundred hours a week, you must be lazy. Right. And now Pluto's in Capricorn, and not too many people think too much of CEOs, corporations, and government. Nobody thinks much of corporations or government. Right. It's the dark side because those entities overplay their hand. Mm -hmm. They go to too much control, too much power, which then leads to the downfall. The thing is the downfall doesn't usually come until it's in the next sign. You know, the problem comes while it's here. But the solution usually doesn't come... So Pluto moves into the next sign, which would be Aquarius. So we've still got a f quite a few years. Oh, we got quite a few years to go for that. It's a very slow-moving outer planet, and we'll not see that there. But we will see some. I think we'll see some radical change over the next several years as we uh, these these conservative forces are there. I mean, I'm curious. I mean, when you think of Pluto and Capricorn with conjunct Saturn in say 2020, you know, what does that look like? It looks like a like I, I would put it together as a responsible reorganization of what's right and what's wrong. Well, actually, I I think it's going to be the culmination of the crisis. Well, I can see that, yeah. I mean, if you if you think, I mean, you know, but you have to agree, every planet has its, has its pluses and minuses. So the transformation, even though it may be painful, does bring about some good at the end. At the end, but not in the middle. 
No. Not while it's happening. See, I think that's the thing. I mean, people want to look to find something good to say. But the reality is you have to deal with things as they are. I, I think that's true. Yeah, yeah. You know, things will, I think things will get worse. I mean, I think we'll have another financial crisis is what I think will happen. I think the question is, how bad is it? Well, if you look at all the debt that's sitting out there, you look at the student loan, just that alone is, is enough to cripple the society. Uh, you know, those, th those debts don't, go, don't get paid as they are by many people are not paying their student loans back. Uh, people default in them. Um, it's well, all going to ripple back. There's just no way it can't. You can't default on a student loan, Chris. Do you know that you cannot write that off in bankruptcy? I did not know that. If you go into, you can, student loans, you can, if you go into bankruptcy, you cannot write off student loans. I didn't know that. Well, and I was actually quite shocked to find out that the cost of a student loan is significantly higher than the cost of a mortgage. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. You can get a student loan start around 8%, whereas a mortgage nowadays is probably about 5 I mean, but that's criminal. Yeah. Of course it is, especially if you want if we want to be a leader in the world where we need our students to be educated. You can't, you know, pillage them and take their money, make them pay. I know so many people who are doing not what they want to do and pay just to pay off their student loans. I know people that are in their 50s that are still paying off student loans. Right. Well, I have one, too, so I'm even older than that. <laughs> I'm still paying oh, but, you, but you went back to school. I'm talking about people who got out of school a long time ago. Right. No, I know. I just think I, I'm saying that. The, the idea of it is that, you know, I just figured I would maybe out, the, the debt would outlive me, <laughs> but it'll come out of my, it'll come out of my estate or something somewhere. They'll get their money, but it is a criminal. That's something that is a real problem that could be, that could be the next financial crisis. And they also, they said that, you know, the automobile industry is, is on the brink of it because they've got done the same thing that the housing business did by giving away way too much free credit without a lot of qualifications in the background. And of course, now they're going to undo some of the banking laws. The Dodd Frank is un, up for uh, grabs or up for reconsideration because of the banking regulations that were put in place in 2008 to prevent it from happening are going to be stripped away. Well, they're already giving out no doc loans again. They're already doing it. Really? In what? In in in, in housing industry? Yeah, they're already giving out. I don't know if they, I don't know if they're calling it no doc no documentation loans, but they're already giving subprime loans are, are making a comeback. Oh, so they've eased up the regulations because there was a time there when it was very difficult even to get a second mortgage or even to refinance if you had your debt to income ratio was too high. Yeah, but that's I think that's changing again. I mean, this is what we get. You know, conservative in theory isn't always conservative in reality. Right. So the whole idea, you know, about conservatives is don't regulate. Right. Exactly. Oh, wait. When you don't regulate, the res this, that's the result you get. But again, I think that this is all the Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn. Mm -hmm. And so, again, this is the juxtaposition between these young people with the with the Uranus and Neptune and Aquarius. So yeah. we still have to get through. I, I don't think things are going to fundamentally change until after Pluto gets out of Capricorn. Yeah. Which is and, another 10 years at least, right? If not more. I think it's 2024. Yeah. So it's not, it's not never, um, you know, but it is not, it's not tomorrow. Right. So I, you know, again, I mean, if you think of the, you know, the, the, the sixties, when things started with the Uranus Pluto conjunction, when things started to change. Right. Roe versus Wade wasn't passed until the seventies. I mean, things, the, you know, the civil rights movement started, the social movement started, but it took a long time before they became ingrained in the society. Oh, I agree. Those changes take a very long time because of the slow process, the slow motion of the, of the, of the government as well as the slow motion of the outer planets. But the fact that the seed was planted and that events did unfold is, is what's encouraging, which is what we're seeing today, which is what started our conversation which is the idea of these, of these kids from Parkland, or at least this generation, having the rebellion and having the guts to stand up and, and fight back. They're mad. They're, they don't have the same sort of, um, you know, they're too young to have the sort of boundaries that maybe we have as we get older and trying to be diplomatic. They're just going out there. They're just fuming, and they're going to make a change, I think, as a result. They're mad. Well, I, again, I think that that's the, it's also the nature of the timing. The, these are what you might call the hero generation coming, starting to come forward. Mm -hmm. 
that this will be the generation that saves things, assuming they can be saved. Well, it makes sense. I mean, I, I could easily, I think there's always room for a savior, as long as you can get into there. And, and, and what it requires is, these, is, is, is students this young right, actually running for office and making their voices heard. And we are seeing that now. We're seeing some very young candidates coming up. And some changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, be very interesting to see what happens in the next election. Well, it's going to be fascinating. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, people. I mean, I'm running, I'm signing petitions. I go to the grocery store and I sign petitions all the time for people who are throwing their hat in the ring to get on the ballot. I mean, these are people who are just regular citizens like you or I who are going out there and saying, I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. And they're, and they're running for office against, you know, established politicians. Well, but in Massachusetts, they don't have a lot to complain about. Let's face it, in different parts of the country, it's a whole other story. No, I understand that. We are in probably the best place to live, but there, there are people who are, who are getting angry even still. I mean, there, there's a groundswell there of people who are coming out. We've seen this. Um, and nothing else, I think, the last election was, a, was an exercise in complacency because it was so widely broadcast and so widely thought that nothing would ever happen that would upset Hillary in her race for the White House. And I used to, I read the New York Times every day, every day at the bottom of the page, she's 80% points over 20%. To, so everybody said, well, if she's a, if it's a fait accompli that she's going to win, we don't have to go vote. Now they see what they've wrought. See, I actually, I actually kind of disagree with that. I, I think that the Democrats lost because Hillary was the candidate. Oh, yeah, I would agree. That's another story altogether. But I'm saying, I think people were misled by the, the pundits and the pollsters who oh, said that, things. That I, you know, that I think is true, but I think that we're in a time frame that somebody who was like what you might call old school, you know, the traditional candidate was not going to win. Right. Bernie Sanders would have had a better chance. Of course he would have. He, of course he was. He was much more. He was much better served for this. She did not. She had too much baggage. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's obvious. Well, it's, why not she even, it's not even if you take even the baggage away. Her worldview wasn't consistent with what people wanted now. Right. She was thinking she's too much like an old person, thinking like an old person. Well, thinking like people wanted, didn't want to hear things were good because they knew they weren't. Right. You, you know, you can't tell people that they can't pay their bills that used to have a decent job and that are now working. I mean, I remember when Jeff Bezos opened up a a warehouse or he was hiring warehouse workers and Obama was touting what good jobs they were. They were $13 an hour. I'd like to see him work for $13 an hour. Right. And, and to expect people to swallow that. I mean, this is the problem is that the Democrats have not been better than the Republicans when it has come to, they're, they're good for the people at the bottom. But both the re- Democrats and the Republicans have served the people at the top. The that's Democrats. Who, that, that's who pays their campaign foundations. <laughs> from, from, the Democrats, know. exactly. The Democrats also help out people at the bottom, but no one has helped out the people in the middle for a very long time. No, that is a huge and, problem, and there's no way to really. I mean, I think it's a difficult category to gauge. I mean, you have to, you have to assign some sort of uh, you know economic you know what your salary range is in order to fit into a class. It has to be more structured with regard to how they did that. Um, but you're right. The middle class is, is suffering the worst of anything of anybody because they their wages have not gone up and they're working longer hours and have been for a long time. And, and I mean, and this this is the real crisis. And it, you know, again, I think it's part of the, the Saturn Pluto and it's part of the anger. And that again, I that's why the right wing extremists can gather so much steam because they, they blame somebody and people are looking for someone to blame, even if they're blaming the wrong people. Right. I know they, they, the Republicans have got a much better marketing campaign going than the Democrats do for sure. But when we look at the charts and we see Mars inching up and, to, and this is just even recent, we see Mars inching up closer to Pluto. No, it's not, that's not good. <laughs> it's, not, it's not good. And, um, you know, we thought that the, the Mars Saturn was going to be a tough one, and you know, there's some degree it is. But here we are with Mars and Pluto. This is really getting into, you know, dicey area. And if ever there, and as the as the news is tightening around the organization in Washington, there with as more allegations come out and more dirt gets found, what better time to strike something and get a, a, get some distraction going? Well, it's very interesting because I, at one point I looked at the at um, Donald Jr.'s chart. 
Kushner's chart, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of those players, and they all have planets in Capricorn that are either being triggered by Saturn or Pluto. Yeah, and they're all having, they're all facing serious problems. I mean, uh, Kushner's in deep, deep water um, with regard to the money he owes and trying to get money from outside of the country in. And if they ever, if this, this the the new investigation from the Southern District of New York, if that comes in and forces the taxes to be, be to be aired, then we'll really see. And that may very well be what straw that breaks that back. I don't know. Um, let me just. I'm going to pull. See if I can pull up his chart because. I don't. Unfortunately, the time isn't available for all right. these. Well, but all the guys that you're talking about, whether, well, yeah, whether it be Paul Manafort, whether it be you know uh, Donald Trump, whether it be the NRA, whether it be Don Jr., whether it be Kushner, they're all having these these very trying aspects coming up, which is interesting. Well, Kushner's son is 20 degrees of Capricorn, which is right where Pluto was stationed. Right there it is right now. Yep, and it's going to be going back. So, here. And he's got the Sun square Pluto in his birth chart. Yeah. Yep. He's and let me, so it must be Don Jr. That's, let me. Um, Don Jr. is also in deep trouble. I mean, they're all of them are. And yeah, he's. Um, yeah, OK, I get them mixed up. I get the which is which mixed up. His son is nine degrees of Capricorn. Mm -hmm. So he's got Saturn, exa Saturn right there. Which now. is exactly where Saturn is stationing now. Right. So I would expect this period of time to be really significantly challenging for both of them, where they got to get caught with something even more than, than they have so far. Oh, I think they will. I think it's just a matter of time. You know, their, their lives are not going well. They're not going at all well, considering what they, where they thought they were and what they thought they landed in. They, you know, they didn't realize. See, they thought they were going to step into this situation as just going to be, you know, daddy takes things over and he's going to run the corporation. This is not a corporation. This is where we get a lot more different. That's the big difference here. And not, in, in many ways... Everything that's happened and that's come out has been the direct result of things that he's done himself. Trump is, there's no one to thank for his woes other than himself. He created every mess he's made. It's ironic that he goes from this private citizen where he had everything covered and was relatively, you know, er, you know nobody, was, nobody was looking up him sideways. Now he's in the most, he's in the biggest fishbowl in the world where everybody watches everything he does and he's going to just, he's just, he's come undone. He's sort of like, this is, this is his Waterloo moment coming up. Well, he, the last eclipse was opposite his planets. Right. No, or one, no, one was opposite. The first, the, the um, which basically, you know, linked up against him. Right. It was on, I think the, the eclipse was on his ascendant, if I recall, I think. Let's see, the last eclipse. In August, the main, the, the, the great American eclipse. Yeah. That, that eclipse, the twenty one Leo. Yeah, the, yeah, that that eclipse in August was at eighteen Leo, which is close to his ascendant and Mars. The eclipse in February was opposite. Um, and the the Uranus. Let me just say something here. Um. Uranus is past the transiting Uranus is past the square to his planets. Mm -hmm. um, but in the not too distant future, Pluto will be opposite his, um, his Saturn Venus conjunction. Yeah. This and is, this is Don Jr. Or, or Jared. This is no, 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 this is actually Trump. Trump. Right. Okay. I thought so. Yeah. Um, and his, I just want to see something. Cause I think, the next. Well, he's 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 got a loaded chart, and he's you know he is a powerful figure who has left his imprint everywhere for better for worse, and we do see that his day of reckoning is coming. I believe, and we can see it on. Um, I think it was Gary Christian who said um, he thinks he's gonna he's gonna resign by August, is what he said. This is a very well known astrologer we saw a couple weeks ago in in Cambridge talking about what was to come. And um, I think that that certainly makes sense. I can't, I mean, if you had the option of, of getting fired or, or quitting, what would you do? I'd quit. You know, take this job and shove it, he's probably going to say. You're getting too close to my personal family. And he'd have reason to go then. Well, I hope that that's true. He's, 
I thought he was going to be a lot worse off when he had the Saturn transits. Yeah, and his, his his popularity has decreased. But I don't think these Republicans are going to get rid of him because he's getting too much done that they want it. Oh no, they're not going to get rid of him. No, they won't get rid of him. It's going to have to take a sea change, or he has to. He, he you know, Mueller gets too close to what he doesn't want him to see, which is all the bank dealings. He's if you cross that red line, well, he's going to have to call his bluff. That's what's going to have to happen. He's going to have to see if that if that. <laughs> or I think that the other side of this is. The the New York Attorney General. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the Southern District will get him because that, that the things is, no, that they, Mueller can't they, look into, the, the New York can look into. Right, and and Trump cannot part, cannot uh, fire those people. Exactly. So, and that's 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 the way to get him. That's the angle because everything else is in a in a rut. Um, well, anyway, we have run out of time as I thought we would. I knew we would. This always goes quickly. My guest today has been Joyce Levine. Uh, she's the author of Breakthrough Astrology. She's also the president of the local NCGR chapter in Boston. And her website is JoyceLevine.com. We've been talking about this remarkable generation that's on its way up now and who will be hitting their stride right around the time of the elections, the generation that fought back against the Park Parkland and is fighting back against the NRA and against gun violence in general. What better way to make a voice than to say, please let me go to school and live? I mean, what the, the, the irony and the, the symbolism is all there. There's not a single parent out there that wants to send their child to school for fear of, of having to run in shelter all the time and have to go through sitting under your desk raids and stuff like that. It's just, it's absurd. So anyway, it's been interesting to see this generation come up this way. I hope that it bears out, but we are in for a bumpy road. We know that for some time, but we've been through bumpy roads before. We'll probably be through them again. Anyway, Joyce, thanks so much for coming on today. It's been great having you on, t on the show today. Great. Thanks, Chris. It was nice to be here. Yeah, same here. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Turning of the Wheel with your host, Chris Fisher. To schedule a reading with me or to order artwork, you may visit my website at www.turningofthewheel.com. That's www.turningofthewheel.com. Or you can call me at 978-393-1036. Thank you. And as always, be open to possibilities.